that little montage of highlights of my time backpacking Thailand. If you don't know, I recently just got back from a two and a half month backpacking trip through the country of Thailand. It was my second time in the country, but the first time I was there was nine years ago. So I revisited a lot of the places that I visited nine years ago, having kind of forgotten what it was like and seeing how it's changed but also on this trip I visited a bunch of new places and in this video I just wanted to reflect on my time there. That's something that I like to do at the end of when I've been somewhere for a really long time or like just backpack through a country for several months I find it nice just to look back on the trip that I've had and just reflect a little bit because I think that every backpacking trip always has its highs and lows and you learn things and you go through things that make you grow as a person and that definitely happened on this trip. I always say the best backpacking trips are the ones that don't go smoothly and that was definitely the case on this backpacking trip but it was incredible nonetheless and I think that when your trip doesn't go to plan or it doesn't run smoothly and things go wrong or, or not as you wanted that's when you kind of grow the most as a traveller, as a person, as a backpacker, um, that's when you learn things about yourself, about other people. I think that's what backpacking is all about. I think holidays are supposed to go well, backpacking is not supposed to go well. I don't know, that sounds crazy, but like, it's true. But first of all, you know that it's the end of a backpacking trip for me because I will always have a hair braid in my hair. You may have seen in the last Thailand vlog in Rayleigh that I got myself a hair braid. Normally that would happen earlier on in a trip. Like, it's just like my little tradition. Something that I always like to do is just get a hair braid in every backpacking destination that I go to. But yeah, normally I would like to get it earlier on, but I got it on literally like my last day in Rayleigh and it's still going strong now a little bit ratty it probably won't last much longer but I do like having it for at least a couple of weeks after a backpacking trip just to just to remind me just to be like yeah you did that you had a really good time anyway so I've received a question from Dan Gordon who has asked would love to see a map overview of your route and how you traveled between the main locations so let's start with that because that's a good little overview at exactly what I did so I started the trip in Bangkok I got an overnight train to Chiang Mai, then spent a few days in Chiang Mai, did a little trekking excursion from there. I then got a minivan bus from Chiang Mai to Pai, and then one back again to Chiang Mai. Then I got a public bus to Chiang Rai, and then from Chiang Rai, I flew all the way down to Suratani via Bangkok. That was two small flights. And then from Suratani, I got a transfer to Koh Samui. So that was like an included van to the ferry port and then the ferry itself to Koh Samui. Then I got a ferry from Koh Samui to Koh Penang, and then another ferry from Koh Penang to Koh Tao, and then an all included transport from Koh Tao to Khao Sok, and that included a overnight ferry back to Suratani, and then a van all the way to Khao Sok. Then from Khao Sok, I got a minivan to Khao Lak, and then I hailed down a public bus in Khao Lak to get to Phuket's old town and traveled around Phuket on the scooter, of course. And then I got a ferry from near Phuket's old town to Koh Phi Phi. 
then a very expensive speedboat from Kopipi all the way down to Koh Lipe. And then from Koh Lipe, I booked an all-inclusive transport to Riley. So that was a speedboat to the Pakbara Pier, and then a van up to Krabi, an outdoor GP taxi to Ao Nang, and then a long tail boat to Riley. And then getting back to Bangkok, I got a long tail boat back to from Riley back to Ao Nang and a grab taxi to Krabi Airport and then I flew back to Bangkok. Whew. And that was <laughs> two and a half months in Thailand. If I was a backpacker going to Thailand for the first time and I had two weeks, I would probably go to Koh Phangan, <laughs> Koh Tao, Khao Sok and Riley. Yeah, yeah, I'd go with that. So let's address perhaps the most significant thing that happened to me personally on this trip to Thailand and something which I've shared with you all. And that is that I started the trip with a boyfriend um, and we had a plan to travel together. We had no plans of breaking up. Uh, we planned on to be together for this trip and for afterwards. And after about, I think just under two months, maybe seven weeks, we broke up mid backpacking trip and we both went separate ways and I continued the final two weeks ish of my trip solo. Yeah, that was a thing that happened and it was completely unexpected. I think it was unexpected for us both. Obviously we didn't start the backpacking trip thinking that that was gonna happen, but I do think that going on a backpacking trip with someone is kind of make or break for a lot of couples. Even though Jeremy and I met on a backpacking trip, I don't know why that one was different, but I do feel like when you're traveling with someone and you're with them 24 seven, it is kind of gonna be make or break because you are seeing them at their best and at their absolute worst. Luckily, our breakup was not a bad one. Yes, it was a sad one because it was unexpected, but it wasn't bad in the sense that we hated each other or that anything particularly bad happened. So that was good and I'm grateful. But after we split up, I was having such a better time. Like I had a couple of days of, of course, being sad, but ultimately, it just worked out so much for the better. I'm used to traveling solo, so that wasn't new to me, and I actually really enjoy traveling solo, but I didn't realize just how much more I would be enjoying myself um, to be by myself, and I think that just goes to show how not right the relationship was. And I really hope that Jeremy had a much better time after he went solo as well. Like, we hope the best for each other, and we still talk occasionally. I also think because some people say oh my god like you broke up when no one you knew was around you you had no friends or family to console you and personally i actually think that being in a foreign destination is the best thing that can happen to you if you break up with someone because you have so much distraction and and i kind of just went into like mission mode like mission let's make some friends uh, mission, let's keep myself busy and distracted. And because I was in this amazing country, obviously, there are so many things to keep you distracted, so many things to do. You're doing new things every day, you're going to new destinations. And so before you know it, you're, you're not concentrating on the breakup that you just had. You're concentrating on what you're doing right now and moving forwards. Whereas had that happened at home, when you know you've got just like a daily routine of like going to work coming back and like you're not doing anything significant i think that although your friends and family might be there it's so much worse because you're dwelling and you're not super distracted and as far as breakups go i don't think it's the worst place in the world to have a breakup to have it in a foreign country but but i guess that might depend on person to person but you know what, I, I never have any regrets. I'm always grateful for every relationship and friendship that I've ever had in my life, even if it doesn't end up working out, because I feel like you learn what you like in a partner or a friend, what you don't like in a partner or a friend, things to look out for in terms of like 
what wasn't working and how can you spot that earlier next time and so although things didn't work out with Jeremy I'm super grateful for the time that we did have together and I hope he feels the same but let's talk about less about my personal life now let's talk more about the beautiful country of Thailand and the first thing I want to address is what it was like to travel Thailand kind of post COVID I won't lie it was a faff to get into the country um, when I was going they had the test and go program which meant that you had to test before you came you had to test on arrival and you had to test on day five and it was all completely mandatory very very strict and if you or anyone you were traveling with were to test positive you would have to quarantine for 10 days in a Thai hospital and your insurance would have to cover that so it's quite strict and it was quite stressful luckily for me and Jeremy at the time like we tested negative and so we had absolutely no issues and ended up going very smoothly and luckily at the time that you're watching this video I think they're very shortly going to be scrapping the entire test and go program you're going to be able to arrive in Thailand without having to do any tests without having to worry about a potential quarantine which would just be an absolute godsend I don't think my experience is how we should view going to Thailand in the future in that sense because obviously they're just going to scrap all of this when COVID is just not an issue in the slightest anymore but once we were in the country and passed the whole test and go program I loved traveling Thailand through this time because there was enough backpackers in the hostels to make friends and for there to be a vibe and for people to go out with but there was not so many that places were like being booked out and there was not a whole lot of tourists in the country and so the popular tourist attractions that would normally be swarming with people for example Maya Bay like I was looking at photos from Maya Bay from like five years ago when it was last open and it was just literally swarming with people it wasn't swarming with people like that was probably the most touristy place we went and we still had loads of space to ourselves on the beach it was just like beautiful and pristine and like everywhere you went you could always get like an amazing photo opportunity because you weren't having to like swim through other people so so that was amazing so if I could take any positives from COVID that would be it. it would be that you just got these amazing places to yourself and they're opening up new places all the time and it's only gonna get busier and I actually think that right now was a brilliant time to travel Thailand and I'm so glad that I went when I did the time of year that I went so I went from January to March which is supposed to be dry season and for the most part the weather was pretty good it was supposed to be a lot better though we had an awful lot of rain which was just really unexpected um, it was not supposed to rain as much as it did and it doesn't normally that time of year so I would still say that going January to March I would recommend going that time I don't know why we got really unlucky with some just 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 a lot of rain but the thing is there would be more in monsoon and wet season so yeah anyway I'm <laughs> I guess I don't regret going the time that we went because I really don't think that it would have been better other times of the year okay so i have received a few questions about thailand travel which i'm going to answer now some quick fire questions well at least i hope they're going to be quick so favorite place hard to say i'm going to go with riley the last destination that i visited absolutely loved it there least favorite place i don't like having least favorite places because i always feel like if i didn't have a good experience there then it just means i kind of want to go back to try and have a better experience, if that makes sense. So the place that I kind of had the least fun in, let's say, was Chiang Rai. I think there were some beautiful places in Chiang Rai. For example, the Kung Korn waterfall and the White Temple were just absolutely insane. But I wasn't overly inspired by the city itself. That could have been the time that I went, like in COVID times, it was just really quite dead. It wasn't overly pretty, but like I said, Although that was my least favorite on this trip, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the worst. I feel like that would be really harsh of me to say. Uh, what surprised me the most? Phuket. I wasn't sure if I was going to like Phuket. I really wasn't sure what it was gonna be like because it's not known to be somewhere that's like popular for backpackers. But I was just really surprised at how beautiful it was, at how beautiful the beaches were like finding banana beach I had no idea that that one existed and I was just like 
this is amazing. This is absolutely stunning. So yeah, Phuket really surprised me. Best place to party. It's got to be Koh Phangan. Obviously, you've got the famous full moon party there, but there's also so many other parties you can do on the island, and the nightlife is just always pumping. And I feel like everyone who goes to Koh Phangan likes to party and is there for a good time, and so it's kind of just all around good vibes. I also really like the nightlife in Koh Tao. I found it just to be a lot more chill. There was like many like live music session nights. There was more of like a smaller community vibe in Koh Tao, which is always fun for a good night out, really easy to meet people. Best scenery, we're gonna go with Khao Suk. I love the scenery in Riley as well, but Khao Sok probably wins for this one. Khao Sok National Park. Best diving. So if you don't know, I did quite a lot of diving in Thailand, unexpectedly, because I, that wasn't really what I had in my uh, head for what I was going to do before I went to Thailand, but it ended up being great. I dived in Koh Tao, in Khao Lak, in Richelo Rock. I dived in Koh Phi Phi, around Maya Bay, and in Koh Lipe. And of those four places that I went diving, my favorite was definitely Koh Lipe. We went to a place called Eight Mile Rock and it was phenomenal. Didn't see any whale sharks, but there was supposed to be a high chance of seeing them. We just got a little bit unlucky, but even without seeing the whale sharks, like the marine life around Eight Mile Rock was just absurd. Just so many schools of fish, so many colors, big corals. It was just a really, really amazing dive. What was the biggest challenge that you faced in Thailand? Very good question. I think emotionally going through a breakup. However, that was not as challenging as the two weeks that I spent doing Muay Thai boxing. Oh boy, that was a physical challenge that I was, I don't think I was prepared for that. You guys are still gonna see the video. I literally had hours and hours and hours of footage, which is why you haven't seen it yet, but it is coming. That is like the final like secret missing episode of the Thailand series is seeing our two week journey doing um, Muay Thai boxing training on the island of Koh Samui at a facility called Super Pro who were at absolutely incredible but oh my god it was hard I was hurting every single day and it was a challenge but I do love a challenge and it was great I loved it Robin has asked how safe did you feel as a solo female and honestly incredibly safe probably the safest I felt as a solo female traveler in many of the countries that I've traveled to. Um, not that I normally don't feel safe, like I'm normally very careful about looking after my own personal safety. I've made many videos on this, but genuinely like Thailand feels really safe. The people are so, so nice. Obviously, like you can't trust everyone, which is why you've just always got to take care of yourself wherever you are. Don't do anything stupid. Don't go walking down dark alleyways at night by yourself. I would always get a taxi home at night as opposed to walking home unless I was with like a big group of people. And I really just felt like Thai people are there to look out for you. They want you to have a good time. They like having tourists there. And I really did feel very safe. Cams asked, did you have problems with really friendly males in Thailand and honestly no probably the first time I've been to a foreign country where you don't have super seedy males pining after you I just feel like it's so much less of a thing in Thailand than it is in other countries it's actually funny speaking to some of the male backpackers and them saying how they don't feel so comfortable and safe on nights out because of the really friendly females in Thailand. And it's just a complete switch to what it's normally like. Um, so yeah, no, I really don't feel like I had a problem with really friendly males in Thailand. Mackenzie asks, should I get a diver's license before I go on my trip to Thailand? No. If you have the time, if you have a few days extra to spare in Thailand, I would 100% do your license when you get there. It's one of the cheapest places in the world to do it. Also, the water is warm and it's just absolutely stunning. There are so many amazing dive shops that you can go with. It would be 100% better to do your diving license in Thailand than back home. But if you've got a really short amount of time in Thailand 
and you know you want to do diving, then maybe you might want to consider doing it beforehand. So when you arrive, you can just entirely do fun dives. But if you've got three or four days to spare in Thailand, I'd 100% do it when you're there. And finally, for this short Q&A, a question from Beth, who says, can I do Thailand in two weeks? Any tips would be really appreciated. It's a funny phrase um, when we say, uh, to do a country like oh I've done Thailand or have you done Cambodia have you done this for me when someone says like oh have you done this country that means to me that you've like explored every crevice of that country or at the very least been to all of like the most popular tourist destinations to go for Thailand that would take you longer than two weeks However, that's not to say that you can't have an incredible time in two weeks in Thailand. It's really actually popular to go on like a two week holiday, even a one week holiday to Thailand and you can get to some really nice spots. Maybe one or two islands would be really nice. Um, for two weeks, you could probably get to three or four islands and have an amazing time, but you would struggle to do the whole country in two weeks. I've been lucky enough to do a sponsored video with Thailand Tourism, which you guys will have already seen, where I talk about why Thailand is an amazing destination to travel. And I really, truly believe that. Like, I think my general thoughts on the country have only gone up. Like, I always knew it was amazing because I went there before, but I was only 19 when I went there before and it was the first country I ever traveled. So I didn't actually have anything to compare it to. But now that I've traveled several countries in the world and coming back to Thailand, I'm like, this place is amazing. There are so many awesome things about traveling this country and I just think it's such an incredible one to go backpacking if you are a first timer or if you are super experienced. There's so many things to do, it's affordable, the people are so nice, the food is amazing, the weather is, well even if it's raining it's warm <laughs> which is really nice so you don't have to pack very much, you can pack really light. The nature is amazing, there's so many things to see, mountains to climb, the ocean is clear and beautiful so much scuba diving and fish to see like it's just it's one of the best countries in the world if not the best country to backpack in the world and I really truly mean that and it's been such a pleasure to discover the country again and spend a lot more time there to really really appreciate it there were just so many moments on this trip and I just thought god this place is great and the backpacking scene is great as well like you're pretty much guaranteed to make friends because there's backpackers all over the shop and you can spend like one week in Thailand or you could spend three months and you won't get bored and you can keep returning. It's somewhere that you can go back to and it definitely is somewhere that I will be returning to. I don't know when, maybe next year. I can, <laughs> I'm not very good at making plans in advance and after I come back from a trip, I'm always like, oh my God, I want to go back because there's always like so much more that you want to do. But yeah, I don't know when I will go back, but I know that I would like to. I'm actually kind of thinking about doing a diving retreat in Thailand. I feel like that would be really, really cool. Still in the very early planning processes of that. But if you are interested, in coming with me on a dive retreat to Thailand, let me know in the comments so I can get a little idea of the interest um, and it would be really cool to start organizing that. But yeah, I think Thailand is just fab. I think it's great for if you want to travel with friends. I think it's amazing for being a solo traveler. I will be making a couple more videos on Thailand. So I feel like I know the country enough now. I'm gonna make an ultimate backpacking travel guide where I'm gonna show you all the best places to go about getting around and just like my general tips for traveling the country so that'll be one video I'm also gonna make a video on exactly how much I spent in Thailand I love making these budgeting videos which will hopefully help you guys out with budgeting your own trips there and finally where am I going to go next? So I was initially planning to film this video in Bangkok when I was gonna be leaving um, and I ended up just being far too tired when I left the country. So you may be able to tell that I'm currently in Australia. Australia is my next destination. You are gonna be seeing on the vlogs uh, me heading to Sydney, doing the Welcome to Travel Tour and in the Blue Mountains. I'm currently in Perth, which is where my sister lives. So I'm spending a bit of time here, but I'm kind of on like a break from travel right now. So I'm not filming too much. 
much. But yeah, that's where I am right now. I will make a whole video in the future talking about my travel plans for the summer because I'm going to be going to quite a lot of places. I'm very, very excited. It's going to be full on. It really is going to be full on, but I'm looking forward to it. Do you want to be in the video? Let's get him in. Thailand was a great place to start off 2022. I've really started it off on a high, even though the trip was full of highs and lows. Like I do just see my whole time there as really, really positive. And I definitely learned a lot. And now it's so good to be back with my favorite little doggy. This is my sister's dog, by the way, who's almost nine years old. Almost nine, but you still look like a puppy. He was very tired. We went on a walk this morning. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed this video it's been a fairly quick one compared to my others actually but if you are considering a trip to thailand i would highly recommend it i think it's good for whether it's going to be your first backpacking trip ever or if you're an experienced backpacker it's just fab it's a great country and no i don't think that it's overrated because for a while i thought that it was i thought oh people absolutely bang on about thailand i'm not so sure it's one of the best it is Having returned and spent a long time there, I can confirm it is one of the best countries in the world to travel and I don't think that it's overrated. I think it's fab. Do you think it's fab? You've never been. You've never been. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.